Ta-da! Today, we're gonna see what we can do about some loose veneer. <laughs> Before I knew better, I was browsing Facebook Marketplace for player pianos and saw an ad that read, antique player piano for sale, solid wood cabinet. And well, that's just not true. All pianos are veneered. And what that means is we've got our core wood or the actual structure of the piano in this case it's oak then we've got a middle layer that's our cross banding that runs this way underneath the cross banding helps reinforce the veneer during seasonal changes and then our veneer surface which is what shows on the piano in this case it's quarter sawn oak and of course that grain runs this way so you've got three layers the core the cross banding which runs this way, and the outer layer, what we see when the piano's assembled, the veneer. It's not very different at all from modern plywood. Here's a thicker piece. So what we can do is slice it, get rid of our core wood. Then you can see we've got just a little of the core wood left, our cross banding, and then of course our veneer. If we sand that, here's what's left of the court wood. Here's our cross banding and our veneer. While there was a lot of loose veneer on both legs of the pianos and both toes, for this video, we'll focus on what it took to repair this right toe of the piano. It's clearly seen a lot of headbutts from a Kirby vacuum cleaner. This piece in particular was hanging on by a thread. Or maybe it was bubblegum. Yuck! Oh, nope, it was a couple of tacks. Yep, two tacks. on the inside of the toe was pretty battered as well and the front or what was left of the front was actually stuck on pretty well and put up a good fight There are a lot of small gouges in the core wood that I started to fill with white epoxy putty that was uh, left over from another project. But here on the back right, I had a big gap to fill. I wasn't sure if hide glue would stick to that large of a surface area of epoxy putty. Time to experiment! Somehow I ended up mixing the exact right amount of putty needed to fill that hole. That never happens. While that dries, let's see what we can do about the caps for the tops of the legs. The left cap is still glued on. The right one, not so much. Okay, the left one's glued on, but it's crooked. Let's see what we can do about that. I use an electric oven to heat my putty knives. The hot blades help separate the glue at the glue joint. Thank you. 
Ooh. Caught it. <laughs> the right cap was already loose from the cabinet. I'm guessing someone used a door frame to remove it. I used a heat gun to help soften the globs of old glue that were left behind. Ooh. Getting hot and it smells like Walgreens. Let's check back in on our experiment. This is the moment of truth. Will the high glue stick to the epoxy putty? Yes, the hide glue does stick to the epoxy putty. After the initial fill in sand, I had a couple low spots. Another nice thing about epoxy putty, it'll stick to itself. Here you can see the front of the stub toe has some rounded corners and other low spots that need to be filled too. These would be challenging to repair with anything other than epoxy putty. This video is not sponsored by epoxy putty, I promise. For the most part, what had to be done on the right side of the cabinet had to be done on the left as well. With all the old damaged veneer off of the piano and the repairs made, it was time to find, or harvest, uh, salvage, some pre-owned veneer from pianos that gave their lives to save others. After cutting the pieces to width, I sliced the veneer off of the donor parts using the table saw set at a very narrow cut. This worked out pretty well. So what I've ended up doing for the final thickness of my pieces is using this block and double-sided tape to hold everything in place and hold it flat and running it on the edge sander here and yes I'm compensating with the salvage veneer cleaned up and cut to size it was time to start gluing them on oh and uh, if it wasn't already painfully obvious I've never done this before but I've always wanted to try this. Masking tape makes a pretty good clamp. For this piece, I had the brilliant common sense idea to apply the glue to the veneer itself and not the piano. On this lower section, I didn't feel I could get a really strong pull with the masking tape. You may have noticed by now, when the piano is not a piano, it makes a great workbench. While that dries, back to the leg caps. You can see the one on the left has a chunk missing out of it, and not only does the one on the right have a nail in it, more importantly it has very plain wood grain which seems out of place on this piano. Now normally I don't take one of a kind antique piano parts and cut them up, but I got an idea. Now these are originally one piece of wood each, but I think I can cut off the damaged part, just the top section, and scarf or graft on a new piece of wood to replace the damaged sections. bulk of the material hogged out with a table saw, off camera I was able to remove the rest with the belt sander. And I went just so there was a little bit of the old material left so that I knew I wasn't taking it too far. With the tapered shape of these pieces I was having trouble holding on to them while sanding. Although I'm making this up as I go, I do have a handle on things. Time to glue on the new pieces. I taped off the overhanging areas so that the glue didn't interfere with the wood's ability to take stain. 
because I'm definitely going to have to stain these with how light colored the new pieces are. And while these dry, we'll go back to the piano. Those first two pieces turned out really well. I cut them a little long, so I was able to sand them to length before I attached the front piece. And while that dries, we'll go back to the leg caps, which have dried overnight. I ended up needing quite a few coats of different colored stains to get the new wood to match the old. And while that stain dries, we'll go back to the piano. Like all the other pieces, I cut this one a little oversized so that I could sand it to the right fit once it was glued down. I had a little low spot that I missed, but I was able to go back and fill it with epoxy putty. Since all the pieces of veneer were cut oversized so that I could sand them to fit, I, I had to make a special sanding block to fit the profile of the top edge. The underside of the piano was originally finished black. I had sanded most of it away, but I was done sanding, so I painted it black. I also painted it black so I could be done sanding. With all the pieces of veneer fit, it was time to finish them. I first started with a staining marker or touch-up marker to take care of the harsh edges that I sanded. Then on to the biggest challenge of the job, color matching. Here's a scrap from the same cut of veneer that I've been using overall. You can see it's not the best match for the cabinet, but I've been doing some testing and I think I have a way to tint my shellac to get a pretty decent match. The challenge is, which part of the piano do I match? I think as long as I can get it within the same color family, I'll be all right. Although I did very little painting for this job, I went through a lot of masking tape. Well, it makes a really good clamp after all. I'll have to remember that. Hopefully it sticks with me. all the finishing done on the leg caps, it's time to put those on. Instead of gluing them, I've inserted double-sided screws so that these caps can be removed in the future. I think it'll be really handy, especially as I continue to work on the piano. I can leave the caps off and have them out of harm's way. Ah! Ah, same to you. In the end, I replaced 10 pieces of veneer. Let's see how it turned out. No, it's by no means perfect, but I think it's a huge improvement. Once the rest of the cabinet is back together, I'll do some more touch-up, some polishing, and tweak the color matching and sheen to make sure everything looks like it belongs. Well, it's really starting to look like a piano again. Okay, barely. But it still feels really good to have that part of the project over with. That was a lot of work. Next week, I'll show you what it took to get the piano restrung. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'd like to share my passion for player pianos with, well, anyone who's interested. 
That includes you and maybe a few people who haven't been enlightened yet. If you would, please consider sharing this video with a friend. And if you have any questions or concerns about what the heck I'm doing, please feel free to leave a comment below, if you want. No pressure.